Now, I'll bet many of you are as concerned about climate change as I am. It's affecting absolutely everything in our society, our economy, our environment, and more and more world peace when it comes right down to it. I'd also guess that pretty much all of you live in a house, work in a building, attend events in an auditorium from time to time, might even uh, go out to a restaurant to eat. And what we don't think about is 40% of all the greenhouse gas emissions in the United States come from those buildings. This is an enormous problem. The good news is that over 70% of all U.S. citizens buy power from a utility that now has a greenhouse gas reduction goal. And many of them are quite aggressive. Here in California, our goal is a zero GHG goal by 2040, which is frankly around the corner. And so how do you get to that sort of solution? First and foremost, we have to get off fossil fuels. This means your cars, obviously, but also this is fossil gas, natural gas, same thing that comes into our homes and also powers most of our grid. So there's an enormous effort underway that we can all participate in, which is electrification of all of our end uses. This means the furnace, the water heater, those things have to go. We're going to replace them with heat pumps that run efficiently off electricity. Your gas range, that's now going to be an induction range. It's better, but it also is electrification, and we can clean up the electric grid. But there are challenges. So we're building all of these new loads on the electric grid, but right now in California, half of all of our electricity is being generated by fossil gas, yet again. So then the big challenge is, how do we deal with decarbonization of our electric system while we're building all these new loads? So obviously, we need to generate a lot of clean energy. Wind power, solar. How many of you have solar in your house? I do. Solar's great. It's clean. It's local. It's reliable. It can be resilient. But solar has a problem. Well, actually, it's not solar's problem, it's the sun. And the problem is that it sets every day, which is very inconvenient, because it sets at the wrong time, because in California, our peak when we need the most energy is summer times right now, around 4 to 9 p.m., and actually 8 and 9, those are the bad hours. That's when it's dirty and it's expensive and we're running off that fossil fuel. So in order to decarbonize our grid and get where we need to go, we need to electrify, but we also need to balance supply and demand. We need to use all of this clean energy we're generating. And that solar problem is a big problem. It manifests as something called the duck curve in California, which is referencing the shape of our demand. It's kind of hard to see without a slide. But um, the problem being is in the middle of the day, we are generating so much solar right now in California that the price of energy goes below zero many days of the year. We are literally paying states like Oregon and Arizona to take solar from us. We have to pay them. And we're turning off as much as 20% of our large-scale renewables on the grid. And so this is terribly inefficient. We need all that solar. We need more solar, but we got to be able to put it to work or it's not going to get us there. So one kind of obvious solution that we, we talk a lot about is storage, right? Like we can put that in a battery. We can pump hydro behind a dam and use it later. We can charge our cars. And we should do all of that. Because this problem is so enormous. This is not a silver bullet. This is a solid bit of buckshot that we need. We need lots of solutions. The other side of that same equation, which represents a massive, relatively untapped resource, is something my company and we call demand flexibility, which is aligning how you use energy and when you use energy with when it's in good supply and when it's low cost and it's clean. And it comes in lots of forms. It could be insulating attics with air conditioners. It's the heat pump that you put in the new house. It's your smart thermostat. It's industrial processes happening at the right times of the day. It's refrigeration systems, pre-cooling so they can float during these peak periods. There's a tremendous amount of potential everywhere we look, huge opportunities. But it's kind of bespoke. It's like everywhere. It's a lot of it. It's not this nice, simple grid that we're used to. Well, it's never really simple, but the California Independent System Operator could, used to be able to put these, you know, see our big screens on the wall and have pictures of power plants and wires between them, and it sort of made sense, and they keep it all stable. But that's a lot harder when you're talking about 12.4 million residential meter endpoints in the state doing stuff. And that's really the problem that I've been trying to solve with my company, Recurve, is how we take that complexity and we utilize all of the smart meters that we've invested billions in that give us telemetry to understand what are these buildings doing? Who has an air conditioner that's running way too much during peak and what can we do about it? And also, how do we look at all of these meters and say, if we put smart thermostats on these meters and insulate the attic and put in a heat pump and we do all of these things, how do we measure the impact they're having and how do we make that into what we call a virtual power plant. 
uh, which is how do we orchestrate all of these buildings to be grid participants? And the good news is you guys have something to say about this. This is not some power plant in the distance. This is the house you live in and the building you work in and this auditorium being a participant in decarbonization. So with this telemetry, with these smart meters, we're able to measure and quantify how these buildings are changing their usage patterns. And we can aggregate them together. We're not looking at, well, we are looking at the individuals, but it's that aggregate that represents the virtual power plant where we can reliably forecast and measure them and allow utilities and CCAs in California, community choice aggregators, to integrate this distributed flexibility resource coming from all of you into the grid as a power plant. So these are virtual power plants, but this is not the metaverse. These are having a real effect. They're every bit as valuable as a traditional supply-side centralized power plant. In fact, they're more valuable because unlike that large-scale power plant, they're creating local jobs and encouraging innovation in our communities. And they're also helping each and every one of you reduce your energy costs. This transition is not free. Make your houses more comfortable, healthier, resilient, all at the same time. These are added benefits. So we should always be tapping flexibility in virtual power plants where they exist and where they are cost-competitive with supply-side resources. That should be the first line in everything that we do.